Is this another insulting day in the world of Magic the Gathering? Or is there a silver lining to Wizards of the Coast offering the Secret Lair Festival in a Box Las Vegas 2023 edition? In today's video, we're going to discuss what Wizards of the Coast is offering you for $249.99 US to buy this product. Are players going to open their wallets? Are they going to check the cushions of the couch for every bit of change to try to spend more money? Because Wizards of the Coast is hoping you're going to, and they want every last drop. Welcome back, everyone. MTG Moxman here, and thanks again for hanging out with me on my channel today. Now, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're only 265 subscribers away from 19,000, and that is the point where I will put out the 20K party video. This is the video at 19,000 subscribers that lets you know what I am planning for the 20,000 subscriber mark. When we reach that mark, the party will begin, and every new subscriber is helping us get closer. So thanks again to everyone who hit that subscribe button yesterday and helped us get just a little bit closer. I really appreciate it. So here we have the Las Vegas Festival in a Box. I remember it last year. Now, of course, I'm going to have some very strong opinions on this particular product. I know most of you are thinking I'm just going to bash right into this thing and tear it apart. But at the same time, I wanted to be very objective and look at what's inside, look at the potential upswing value, and then talk about what I think is happening. So let's, let's start there. Let's take a look at what's inside this product first. You know what they say, what happens in Vegas is available for a limited time while well, supplies last. At least that's what they say when it comes to Festival in a Box Las Vegas 2023. If you can't attend MagicCon Las Vegas in person, Lady Luck is on your side because we're offering awesome MagicCon merch direct to you. For booster fans, this bundle includes a Mystery Booster Convention Edition Booster Box and a Chaos Draft booster grab bag filled with a wild variety of fan favorite boosters from recent years. On top of that, you'll get two amazing exclusives. A Relentless Rats Secret Layer promo card that's only available at Magic Con Las Vegas. And here, and Dan Frazier's Mox Box, an extraordinary secret layer drop featuring Mox Opal, Mox Tantalite, and Soul Ring with foil etched retro frame art by the legendary Dan Frazier. We're talking jackpot. So, turn on your neon lights and Viva Los Magicon. All cards are in English only. Now, the contents. One mystery booster convention edition booster box with 24 boosters with one box. One Dan Frazier's Mox box, foil etched secret layer drop. One Relentless Rats non-foil secret layer promo by Graham Yarrington. One Chaos Draft 24 booster box grab bag of one Dominaria Remastered draft booster. Three Modern Horizons 2 draft boosters. One Dominaria United. One Brothers War. Two Streets of New Capenna. Four Kamigawa. Three Wilds of Eldraine. Four March the Machine. One Phyrexia All Will Be One. Two Innistrad. And two Midnight Hunt. Okay, we've got a Chaos Draft box of 24 packs. Then we got the Mystery Booster Convention box, 24 packs. So that's 48 in total, varying values, obviously. And then you've got the Secret Layer. And that Secret Layer Mox box with the Relentless Rats. So there's the contents of what they are offering us. Now, the price tag of $249 US. Here in Canada, that puts it around $350, give or take depending on shipping and fees and import fees and stuff, could be as high as 400 bucks. So I'm not going to talk about the Canadian side of this. I'm going to stick to the U.S. for this because as soon as you have to ship outside of the U.S., the prices get really crazy and it never makes sense. So let's just stick to the U.S. and say we have a $249.99 U.S. box. That's the price. This is the festival box. And we got 48 packs. When you look at the variety of packs they gave you, did you notice anything? Because I looked at them, I said, okay, we've got a nice variety of different choices. There could be fetch lands here. There could be some different spicy stuff in each of these packs. We've, we've got a good selection. It looks nice. 
the convention box, if it's anything like last time, you could have, uh, what, man, mana vaults, you could have mana crypt, all kinds of crazy stuff in there. That's not bad either. A lot of fun are inside those boxes. I totally agree. And then the secret layer drop, which of course, the retro frames look very nice. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video with a little more description. But then you've also got the Mox Opal there, which has some actual value to it, okay? Then we got the Relentless Rats, which is a little exclusive promo. I don't think they chose the best card personally, but that's what they've left us with. So a dollar value amount, this probably does not look like a bad deal at all if you compared it a year ago. The mistake Wizards of the Coast, to me, in my opinion, has made right now is when they put this together, it was probably over a year ago. And what they've done is, at least in my opinion, again, guys, I think they just tore apart extra booster boxes they had around the warehouses and they start assembling kits. Just like I've seen done in all kinds of other factory sites, when you go to one of these places that has a lot of excess stuff, they tear into it and make these like gift baskets and gift bags by taking apart a sealed product style. So if it was a box of new Capenna, 36 packs, only two packs for each one, that makes 18 of those kits. And then this goes to 18, and this goes to 18, and they can start putting together these boxes. And it's how they're getting rid of excess materials that they had around the warehouses, extra boxes that they couldn't move. So they're more than happy to get rid of those. So on paper, it may look like not a bad value for us, but really it's them getting rid of excess stock, getting a little bit of dollar value for it and getting it off the books. Understand what you're looking at and make an informed decision. This is how it appears to me. The convention box is a convention box, okay? But they're probably ones they've had around the warehouses for years. They probably printed a mass amount. The um, secret layer stuff, I gotta be honest, the Mox Opal is a nice touch. I don't know what the value will be after this stuff comes out. At the time, I think I looked, it was 80 bucks. So that again, does not look like a bad positioned card. The artwork looks very nice. I'll discuss that in a moment. It looks fairly well put together. So overall, I don't believe the value is horrible, but I'm going into this looking at a year ago. When I step forward into 2023, I say it's not enough. Either cut the price in half or give us double what you're offering. And that is my negative attitude seeping through. And in this case, I want to stay objective. My negative attitude toward a lot of these products right now, I just keep thinking of overprinting. All those packs were lying around a warehouse. And that's due to over, just overprinting. It's all about overprinting. And that's what I see when I saw that product. But when you're looking for value, it is not a horrible value in terms of what you'll get out of it. There's no, you don't know what's going to be inside the packs. You don't know the excitement, the fun, the enjoyment you're going to have. If I took me, my kid, and Mrs. Mox out to a movie, popcorn, drinks, we're at 150 bucks without blinking. If you went out for dinner before that, I'm at 350 bucks. Depending on where you go, gas, time, it, at least you get to keep the cards at the end. So as much as I want to trash this product to the ground, and just be super negative and just grind it out and tell you every horrible thing about it, it's not as bad as it could have been, but I think they could have spiced it up a bit more by adding in some collector packs. Just a little bit. That, that draft of 24, they could have lowered those two pack ones, put a couple of collector packs in there and really spiced it up. And that would have appealed to a lot more players. And I know they have collector boxes sitting around. I have unofficial knowledge. I don't know anything. It's a lie. But maybe they have some boxes sitting around that they're not telling people about. Either way, this stuff was available to them. They could have made it a little bit more enticing to get this stuff off the books to clear more units. I actually think this will probably sell okay. I think there'll be enough interest from players and there'll be enough like, hey, I'm here. I might as well just buy the box. Because when you're comparing against other entertainment means, it's not the worst deal. And again, I want to trash it. I really do. But I want to be objective about this and not just give you a straight out opinion. I'm adding dollar value amounts up. It's not the worst deal. It's not. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other part here. Let's take a closer look at what they're offering with the Mox Box and the Relentless Rats. Now here in this image of the Mox Box Secret Layer Drop, as well as the exclusive Relentless Rats, there's actually a lot going on here that I think players also need to be aware of. Number one, Dan Frazier, iconic magic artist. They put this in a retro frame. There's a reason why they chose they chose the retro frame. In case you guys weren't aware, a lot of retro frame stuff appeals 
to an older demographic audience of Magic the Gathering that can afford to pay these prices of $249.99. They can afford to buy it, and this artwork will appeal to them. I know it appealed to me when I looked at it. The price tag doesn't, but I can, I can appreciate the art, and the retro frame drew my eyes right away. So we have the Mox Tantalite, which right now is not broken in modern. They've never done anything to get rid of those suspend counters. I'm still expecting something in timey-wimey when we get the... Um, the drop that comes up, so be prepared for that just in case Doctor Who does something crazy. We have Mox Opal, which looks amazing. Great piece of artwork. I love the way it looks. Um, it's awesome. Okay, I really like that one. Then we've got Soul Ring. Retro frame. I like the look of it again. I can't help myself, guys. It is the retro frame, and as an older player, I can tell you, this appeals to me. The Relentless Rats looks like nothing to me. I prefer the original artwork. This just looks like some kind of color collage that I saw in my kid's school. It doesn't do it for me. So me as a player, I'm not drawn to that at all, but I can appreciate it. And I wish they had chosen a card of, of decent value for that. It's nice to know Mox Opal at least has a higher value count. I think it's $80 when I looked at the um, price range for that card right now, where Relentless Rats, you're like, meh, I don't care. So that's what we're looking at when you see this artwork. I told you the Mox Box thing is very appealing to any retro player the retro frame artwork really does appeal to people. It has a certain type of nostalgia that draws older players in. Wizards of the Coast is very well aware of the marketing style and gimmicks they use to attract certain audiences within their sphere of influence in Magic the Gathering. Knowing and understanding their marketing and how they do things doesn't always get those players to buy, but it gets them the chance to have us buy. At least gets our eyeballs looking at it. And that is a win from the marketing department. I'm going to give it to them. Dan Frazier, great job. Now, for this last little part of the video, I want to show you guys the cover page of what they were going to sell for the product. I want you to understand, at least from my opinion again, how this stuff comes out from a marketing perspective and what they're trying to do with the imagery they show you on the page to build up the excitement. Let's take a moment to enjoy this image. At the top, you'll see the Festival in a Box Las Vegas starts in one day, 23 hours, 14 minutes, and 21 seconds, and that's at the time that I took the photo. Then it says the next line, limited stock. You notice that's in orange. That's to draw your eyes, and it's a slightly smaller image on the screen to make it kind of pop out a little bit more. Then it says the Festival in a Box, reminding you what you're looking for. Then it has the price tag, which is surprisingly a little bit smaller than it should be, and that's kind of hide the fact what they're selling you. Then you've got the coming soon in red, and it's in small bold again, again, to draw the eyes to it. And the interesting one I really like is where it says free shipping on orders over $75 US only before applicable taxes and fees terms and service make it, you know conditions apply that's very interesting to how the marketing team put this together to get players built up to get them excited about this product and it's all tricks used in marketing every day I remember being in public school in the 80s and discussing this very topic about marketing understanding what you're looking at and what they are trying to do to get you to buy it. Just like commercials nowadays show a child telling their parents, I need new clothes, you should buy on Amazon. Don't you want your son to look nice? Don't you want your daughter to look nice? These are all ways to get you to buy things. A lot of people forget that these things were taught to us to understand so we don't fall for marketing gimmicks. That we can look beyond the fluff and puff to actually get to the nail. To see what they're getting at and what they're offering you and what you're getting for your dollar. This is something that I've noticed with Wizards of the Coast in the last little while. Wizards has really gotten pretty good at how they put their marketing stuff together. You can look this stuff up guys. It's not just me talking. You can look up how marketing works and how the subliminal side of stuff works to get your mind keyed into certain things. It's really fascinating to see how far, you know, the technology has come to get us going, to get us excited about things. There's a real science behind it. And I just want to make everyone aware. So as we end off the video, you've made through, you've got to the end. There's almost nobody here at this point, except for those Necronomicon fans. You notice I brought it down here. I brought this down because they're playing from a different playbook with this product. They're really pulling out a lot of the stops to get us excited. And it's like, it's like we're going to be dragged into the book, right? 
So I brought it down to share with everyone. But anyway, when I looked at this product, the first thing I said, I was angry. I was angry. I couldn't help myself, guys. And that is that negativity coming through because I know it's excess product. I know it's sitting in a warehouse. I am aware. But then I took a moment to say, wait a second, what are they actually offering us? What's the experience going to be? Let me compare it against other experiences. When I started shopping around and what it would take to do a day here, a day of entertainment there, a dinner out, a movie, a show, going to a play, you start adding up the bills and you go, okay, it's 90 bucks for tickets here for one person, that's 180. <sighs> entertainment in general has just become more expensive. And they are all fighting for our dollars. So as much as I want to bash the product, guys, when I compared it against all the other forms of entertainment, okay, Magic is still one of the cheaper options. Going to Magic, even a pre-release for 40 bucks, that is a bargain. It may seem like a lot of money. It may be a lot of money to you. But compared to all the other forms of entertainment out there, Magic is still one of the cheaper forms because the LGS isn't charging you to be there. At least not yet. They're not charging you to be there yet. You can go there, you can enjoy it, buy a pack, trade some stuff. So, and you get to enjoy the cards forever. Where most of these things, you just have the memories of a show, of a movie. You know, you don't get to walk out of that movie theater with the DVD. You get to own it at the end. But you do get to walk out with the magic cards. So as much as I want to bash everything down, and yes, they should have added the collector packs to this. They should have added like a few collector boosters. I think they could have done that, especially for Crimson Vow, Midnight Hunt, some of the cheaper ones. They had options. Um, it's still not a badly put together product. The Mox Opal kind of tops off the cherry there a little bit. So for some players, this will probably be a good hit. I really appreciate everyone stopping by, hanging out with me on the channel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section about this product, about the festival in the box. Are you going to Vegas? I would like to know. Um, you're here at the end. I'm, you know what? I'll save it for the ramble jamble after the credits. You can stick around for the credits. We're going to talk. All right, a big shout out and thank you to the fantastic patrons I have supporting my channel each and every day. Because these amazing patrons, daily content is added to YouTube for you guys to enjoy. Thanks again to all my supporters. Welcome back to the Ramble Jamble. Little bit of, little bit of coffee left. There, 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 little bit, little bit. So you made it to the end. So, Vegas. Now, I'm not going to Vegas this year. But I did... And for those who've been on my channel while, you know I've never traveled anywhere. I did pick up the passport paperwork for Mrs. Mox, Minnie Mox, myself, to get passports. Which means the potential is there. With a little coaxing, that I may arrive next year for Vegas. I may actually be there, which is kind of freaky, I know. I'm thinking about it, like seriously thinking about it. I'll have to save some money, put some stuff together. But there is a chance... For 2024 that I'm going to Vegas to be at MagicCon and maybe meet some of you guys. I think that'd be cool. You guys let me know what you think. I'll see you guys soon. I know I, I brought home the paperwork. Freaked me out. But I'm thinking about it. Well, no, I'm going to get the passports. That's for sure. Just got to save some money. Vegas!